everyone, it's Jivo and welcome to another episode of Cornered. This podcast is powered by the Audio Technica AT2040 Dynamic Broadcast Microphone. If you like what you hear, head down to our website and place an order or pop by the DJ Corner HQ to do a quick mic test. All right, guys, can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's maybe not that obvious, but I am. Today we have in the studio one of the most down to earth, one of the most hard working, one of the most talented DJs in the Middle East, one of the pioneers of the Dubai DJ scene. He was one of two residents at Peppermint Dubai. Y'all remember Peppermint? All right, he has opened and closed for and played alongside the likes of David Guetta, Hardwell, Dead Mouse, and many more. Y'all give it up for my man. Mad Jam. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bro, uh, first, um, thank you for making time out of your busy schedule. Hey, I know you're fly. I mean, you're a jet setter. Yeah, right? well, I mean, I mean, now we are in 2021, 22. We, we resumed. But yeah, yeah, we had a good break. <laughs> we had, we a, had good a good break. break. Yeah. Thanks for that intro, man. It was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty cool. I love the studio here. This has got a great, and the, uh, the microphone sounds really nice. Appreciate it. I appreciate can talk it. into it like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guys at Audio Technica were nice enough to sponsor the microphones. Shout out. Um, all right. Now, Mad Jam. Um, a lot of people know you, right? But... How personally do they know you? That's what you know. We're trying to get into today. Um, let's talk about what it was like um, before the cool stage name. How I mean, what was it like growing up uh, as Ahmed before yeah. before Mad Jam? Yeah, my mom only uses my name if she's angry at me. <laughs> my, my sister also like you know they only use Ahmed if like, there's something serious because uh, hey because if, <laughs> if I if I ever end up you know at an airport and you know and there's you know thousands of people right. and someone's shouting Ahmed Ahmed I'm not gonna hear that but if someone goes Mad Jam I'm like who who be calling who, who be calling that name hundred percent so I started DJing when I was ten okay so that was. A long time ago, 30 plus years ago. Wow. So, um, yeah. Wow. Uh, that's how old I am now, but <laughs> don't look at me too much. I don't look that old. So you, um, you finally gave in and got rid of uh, got the, rid of the hair. Yeah. yeah, I did that earlier this year. It's just a lot easier. I still use shampoo. I don't know why. <laughs> I, just, I think it's more for the beard than anything else, though. So, back when I started, uh, music, the technology was still on cassettes. Right. So the only way you had music is either you had vinyl, which as a 10-year-old, I mean, my parents had some records, right. but we didn't have like, you know, the Technics with the, with the pitch controls, right, so right, it was right. almost impossible to play vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, so we had cassettes, and I used to record music as a kid in California where I was born and raised, um, record music off the radio. And there was a lot of really good music in that late 80s, early 90s. Right, so even right. before I was 10, constantly, you know, listening to the great radio stations we had in Southern California, Kiss FM and Power 106, which always played great music. So that was our reference for music. You know, you wait for the Rick D's and the weekly top 40 to know what's really going on in the charts. Right. So when I was 10 years old, I had my cassette collection, my box, uh, and my parents decided to move back to Lebanon as the war, the Civil War ended. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we said, okay, let's go back. And... Um, Started DJing by doing my twin sister's party back in 1992. I don't know how many of you were alive then, but... Um, I was two years old. <laughs> two years old? Okay, good. You were alive. Good. At least you passed the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not many people have. And um, so, yeah, back then it was, you know, we had this uh, little boom box. It was kind of right. like this, this... It was called a single Lodian. It was a big speaker right. and had two cassette players and an equalizer. And it had a small little crossfader. Oh, it wasn't wow. really a crossfader. It was just a little... <laughs> Right, right, right. You have to blow in it, kind of oh. like the old Nintendo, <laughs> to get it working. So yeah. I did. I did that party. I literally played about four hours, five hours. I would have a uh, what's it called, a Walkman. Oh wow, okay. So it wasn't a Discman. It was an actual cassette player yeah, called cassette the Walkman. Player. Yeah, the Sony Walkman. It's one of these like legendary things from the. Uh, <laughs> I love these background noises. Great. <laughs> it was an early um, uh, portable cassette player, and what you do is I prepare the the tapes. I would cue them up on the on the Walkman. Then I pop them in there. You stick your finger. You, you can use a pen, but the pen is too serious. Right, Just right. Use your finger. You you rewind it for you know a couple of rolls. Right. Stick it in there. Hit play, pause, and then release the play, and then stop the other track, and then. 
and do the right. crossfade. I love so. how <laughs> I, I love how I'm sure a lot of people who are listening are like, what is this gibberish? Yeah, yeah, can't relate. <laughs> is it talking Chinese? You know. <laughs> Basically, you guys have it so much easier now. Oh, it's definitely. USB definitely. plug and play laptop. But yeah. back then, we had to hold every song on its own, and it wasn't easy going to these parties carrying. You know, this like 10 kilo, you know, as a 10 year old, 10 kilos is quite a lot, you know, like you don't yeah. even handle that from the supermarket. So right. 10 kilo boom box and like another big bag of cassettes. Cassettes, And CDs, so that, yeah. that, that's how it started. It was just then. And a few weeks later, my sister's friends were at the party said, oh yeah, we liked your brother's music. Can he come to our party and bring his little box with him? So it just kept going and going and going. I have no idea where I am now. I have no idea how this happened. Nice. I really have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you, I mean... <laughs> before did you want to did you ever want to be anything uh before you realized wow you you know you're good at playing music i don't say i'm good I'll, uh, I, I, i don't say i'm good no I until think, now no I, i i i'm still in denial okay I, i still don't i mean people say you have to do your hell no you have to do your job i'm like right. it's not a job i mean if it becomes a job then you know you're just doing it for the money and yeah. and i still do not want that to become the priority. It's always fun. And you know, right. wherever I go, whether I do a, a house party for 80 people or I'm doing the big stage for 18,000, right. it's still the same excitement because I did this, I don't want to get dirty here, but I did this before puberty, you know, before, uh, yeah, so I had no hair. <laughs> I mean, hormones were there, but like your priority as, as a 10 year old, yeah, 11 yeah. year old was not about who am I going to kiss and yeah. which party and am I going to have my first or not it right. wasn't it was always about the music so, and so now 30 and a half almost yeah 31 years later it's still the same passion it's still the same fun and um i try to preach this to as many people as possible because you got to be passionate in your heart from this from the beginning and um most people nowadays approach it from a like i'm interested to learn and i see how people have succeeded to me i don't consider myself a, a, a success i just know that i'm just doing it unconsciously i don't even know where i wake up sometimes in a hotel like where am i oh yeah ha hmm. ah, ah. oh yeah i'm in qatar no i'm in dubai no wait i'm in i'm in south of france right. i mean but you lose it's, track. it's great you lose yeah. track. <laughs> it takes about 10 minutes to realize but it's uh, it's the same yeah. passion it doesn't die but i mean was there anything else you wanted to be before you know Uh, before music took over your whole life i wanted to be a pilot wow <laughs> i actually wanted to fly pilots i actually did about 20 hours as a kid on flying little cessnas in california as a kid how old? Yeah, as a kid as a as a seven eight year old you can actually do training you, you really can, you can get your license at 16 so you can actually fly a plane before you drive a car in some states depends That's but uh, i had a really good time in doing that um but that all changed when my parents moved to lebanon but i still enjoy flying and this is a good thing because with right. all the traveling i do i still get excited you know getting on the plane hearing the passenger. captain talking yeah, and, I, yeah. and i watch the wing i watch the the trailing edge and the and the, and the, and the flaps right. you know i like the whole process of flying right so i still have a passion for that and i thought if the djing got too annoying i, ha I have a backup plan which is to be a pilot but uh, at my age now it's a little too late No, nothing's ever too late. <laughs> nothing's ever too I don't think, I don't believe that. Um, okay, I think, we, wow, we covered what equipments did you use. Um, okay. I can tell you the evolution of what happened. Oh, yeah, I, I Because, love that. Because um, for most people that don't know, CDs back in the day, you had to buy the original CD. Yeah. So you would buy a whole album for like three songs, you know, and those three songs were the only ones, and the rest of the CD were junk. There were some CDs we'd buy for one song. Right. But the only way to get that one song was to buy the, at the time, it was $18 <clears throat> for a whole album and just to play that one song. Right. And then, like, a few months later, they released a remix that's even better, but then you got to go and buy the single version, which was, at the time, I think, $7 or $12 just What? for two tracks. Right. So that was before recording CDs. So uh, uh, once once we burning. had that, burning, uh, yeah. you guys got a CD burning, burning, yeah, yeah. Nero Rom burning or oh yeah, <laughs> what was it? Easy CD creator was oh, yeah. that the name? <laughs> I don't know if you guys. No, my favorite was Nero. Nero, Nero yeah, Nero. Yeah. That the burning Rom, it had Rome on, on yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. So before recording CDs, you literally had to buy every album just for those couple of tracks, and most of the equipment we had after the cassettes became two disc mans. Right. So the disc man is, you know, when CDs were cool in your car, but your car didn't have a, a CD player. Right. You'd have these 
car versions of a of of a of a of a, of a disc man. And what they did is they had sometimes ten seconds of anti skip. So yeah. when you're at these parties, you have two disc mans and a mixer, and you would literally put the CD in and it would go into play. So in case one of them got bumped by mistake or there was vibration from the sound, at least you have ten seconds yeah. of buffer. Yeah, that yeah, was like yeah. ten seconds of buffer. Like you, you two people have no idea yeah. how much we struggled with back in the day. Not even close. I mean, you could. A lot of people use iPhones and iPod, uh, iPods before iPhones for uh, a running. Yeah. Right. You can't do that with a disman. No, you no have a disman. That's yeah. if you're running, it's going. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, she had yeah, to always yeah. back that up, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then eventually we, um, I, mean, I mean, thanks to Pioneer DJ, uh, my family, um, the CDJ 500s came around, but they were a bit expensive. The game changer was in 1998, the CDJ 100s came out, the white ones. So anyone who's been DJing for the last 15 years have probably seen these white machines. They were the first... A reliable, portable, and they had three effects, Jet Zip Wah with the hold button. Uh, and that made it more affordable for so many people to finally get access to CD players with pitch control. So you can actually speed up the track, slow up the track, hit the cue play. Because um, before that, you had to have these 19-inch rack CD players yeah. where you'd have two two drives yeah. that would sit on one side. You would take a little DIN controller and put that under the mixer. And you have play, pause, and pitch up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus minus. Plus minus. But the yep. CDJ 100s were a game changer for many people, especially my age. And um, I still have four of them at home and they still work. And you're getting 20 two years more. Later, 20, 24 years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They still work. Yeah. Great. I mean, just just to just to summarize, where have you, uh, off the top of your head, where have you played? Oh, I've played about 60 countries. Six zero. Yeah, six zero. <laughs> Um, and I, every, every country, every club, yay! every country, every city has its own charm and its own experience and its own vibe. But there is some commonality, which is to me, again, I'm there just to play what I believe would work for that crowd. Um, most of the time it's, it's hit. There are a few times it's been slightly missed, but, uh, with a flexible DJ with experience, you learn to adapt to a different crowd. So, uh, one of the coolest crowds to adapt to was actually in moscow i've been to moscow like four times mm -hmm. and the russian crowd are pretty intense i mean i've done some really wild parties there i'd love to go back soon again um and uh they were pretty much flexible listening to everything because when i go to these cities i tend to hear what other clubs are playing and i get an idea of what they're used to and i think how can i come in and do something that's slightly different right or give them something that's familiar but also my own version of it so um yeah, 60 countries, great vibe. I'm based in the Middle East. I love the Middle East. India was great too. Uh, India is great because everyone's there to just release the stress. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of good vibes. Which place in India? I mean, um, Mysuru, Bangalore, Bangalore. Oh, uh, yeah, Bangalore. Yeah, that, that's a party hub. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to remember. There's like two names, you know, like there's like the colonizing name and then the official name. The so official name. <laughs> I always get them mixed up. I don't know. Bangalore, Chennai, Mumbai, Chennai. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mumbai, yeah. Chennai. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Great times. Yeah. Um, Okay, a different question. Which one is your? I mean, same question. Uh, pretty much the same question. But w which would you say is your favorite? I mean, if you have to pick one, I know it's a difficult question. But yeah, I mean, I live in Beirut, which is the land of chaos. <laughs> I, I live there because I, I live happily there. Right. Beirut's been, you know, my home since uh, that's where it all started. That's where the the DJing went from just having cassettes to actually playing parties, from doing like school parties to doing like big concerts for you know thousands of people uh, my first radio experience was in lebanon so it, it's where where i live where i'm passionate about despite all the chaos especially the last couple of years um it's always going to be my home and it's everywhere i go in beirut i bump into someone i know so oh thank you guys you make me so emotional <laughs> uh, but the, the greatest thing about beirut is again when i do these club nights I will know probably at least half the people there. Mm -hmm. um, but then with time, if I play the same place once a month, like I've been doing BO18 Beirut for 22 years, every month, for 22 years, just one night a month, not every week. Um, and every time I go there, the other 50% that I don't know, I end up becoming friends with. Oh, wow. So I'll be their friends. I'll know like 80% by the end of the year. So um, yeah, Beirut is just a place that's just special to me. People are a little more picky about the music in Beirut than in other cities, which makes it more challenging for a DJ. Right. Like you gotta constantly impress, right. constantly update. I go, I go all the places. Dubai is pretty intense now as well. Um, but I know that Dubai, I can play stuff that I've maybe overplayed in other cities, but in Dubai, I know I can refresh the minds as well. So, right. but Beirut is Beirut is home and it's always gonna be my home, so yeah. What, okay, what about uh, a particular gig? 
Mm, there's a lot. <laughs> oh my God, there's so many. Um, I'll just think of one off the top of my head since we're here in Dubai. Um, there was a Cream Fields that we did in Abu Dhabi. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've been with them from the beginning, from 2009, but there was one specific one where Tiny Tempo was getting off stage and then they had to do the transition to Tiesto. And there was a half an hour, 45 gap that I had to fill. Okay. And there was a good 15,000 people there. And were I you mean, scheduled for that particular I, slot? I was. I knew that I was going to do that, but on the moment uh -huh. when like Tiny Tempo was doing his last track, and I'm on the I'm on the, the 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 stairs of the stage, ready to come and take over, I was nervous like this. And I think stage fright is part of the adrenaline rush right. because your nerves can convert into energy. Yep. So that was one perfect example of how. I had no idea how it was going to go. I was nervous. I don't know if I wanted to vomit. I don't know if I needed to take a... <laughs> I don't know if I needed to down another Red Bull can. I, I had no idea what to do. I had no idea. Right. So, But I get there and I was literally like shaking like this because everybody just had an amazing 45 minutes with Tiny Tempa. Yeah, we pass out. And <laughs> I had to transition before Tiesto gets on. And so I was really nervous the first five, 10 minutes. But then within those 10 minutes, again, that energy converted into adrenaline. And it was pretty, pretty intense, pretty intense 45 minutes. That was one of the best 45 minutes that I remember. And it, it was just like a blur in my mind. It was almost like, like I was semi-unconscious, kind of like I was in a dream state. But it, <laughs> it happened fast, experience, huh? just banged it out, and we had a good time. And yeah, that was one of those scary stage moments that became one of the best. So yeah. Great. What about <clears throat> favorite DJ you opened or closed or played alongside with? There's, there's only one who is like a brother for me for life, even though he's kind of older, is Carl Cox. Oh, okay. legend. Carl Cox. Legend. First time we had him in Dubai. <laughs> With more hip-hop horns, but yeah, Carl yeah. Cox. Um, he's in his 60s now. Uh, he's always been living his life to the fullest. You know, he's been through a lot of hard times, but he's also come out okay. He's still traveling the world. Uh, he has different um, styles he plays. He plays the very aggressive techno, which a lot of people know him for, but he also plays a lot of disco, funk, and soul, which very few people actually hear of. And he's got a great selection because he's been DJing, you know, for 40 plus yeah. years. Yeah. I've been DJing for 30. Mm, yeah, so close. Yeah. But um, age gap is not really a thing, but he's a role model, 60 years old, traveling the world, living life, very positive, very happy. Um, and 2006, we had him here. 2008, we've had him in Beirut. And just a real cool down-to-earth guy. Comes to the booth a bit early, gives you a hug, you know, stays humble. So he's a perfect role model and a good and a good friend. And we WhatsApp each other once in a while. Good. So yeah, it's cool. Good. Good to know. Um, uh, would you consider yourself a gearhead? Yeah, totally. Um, I don't use, I'm, I'm not a Red Bull three-star kind of guy, so I don't tend to push too many buttons and make too much noise out of the music. I like to select the right tracks and let them flow. I'm more of a journey DJ, so right. I don't do a 15-minute set. I'll rather do a 12-hour set, and I have done many 12-hour sets, and those are the best because you start in the afternoon, it goes in one direction, the sun goes down, you go in another direction, nighttime is just rah, rah, rah. And then by the time the sun comes up, everyone's like, oh my God, this is beautiful. So I love, <laughs> I love doing the long marathon sets. Right. My record is about 14 and a half hours. Um, and I only stopped because everybody else was, was passed out, but I would have kept going. Um, if cause there's, there's one person on the one dance floor. Person, yeah. One, yeah. And, and one person in the booth who literally was in the booth the whole time. Um, it's nice doing the longer sets because you can really express different moods, different emotions. Like I'll give you one perfect example. At one point my bladder got so full, I had to, I had to use the toilet. So the music became a bit more aggressive, you know, right. then I finally took a, I played a long song so I can go run and come back. When I came back, I started playing happy stuff again. <laughs> So it really is. Everyone's focused on, uh, everyone's focused on my mood. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I have to pee so badly. I'm so angry. I have to go. <laughs> and I went. I came back. I'm so much better. La 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 la. Sunrise. Yay. So, so yeah. It's it, that's what's right. nice about doing longer sets. You right. have these these journeys you take people on. So yeah, it's great. Oh great. I mean, from from the moment. I mean, from the from the you know uh, time you started up until now. What is one significant or one uh, what do you call it? Uh, significant moment right in your whole career or you know in the industry that changed everything okay there, there's been many yeah but I'll, I'll give you one since you mentioned my childhood um before we moved back to beirut uh, living in california i had this very strange dream i was probably like nine or eight years old i'm on a stage it's nighttime there's a red light on me i don't know what i'm doing but i know that people are smiling 
Okay. So at the time, I thought I was a comedian. So I didn't know. Like I woke up, woke up that morning. I remember this dream very well, even though it's a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but I remember very well. There was something I was doing, and I wasn't sure what it was. It didn't make sense as an eight-year-old. I was on a stage, the red light. The whole thing was kind of vague. Right. About uh, 15 years later... One of these events that I'm doing uh, in Beirut was uh, Fête de la Musique, which is the uh, 21st of June, which is the longest day of the year. It's a global French francophone uh, where they do this um, a music festival. Right. And there was a moment where I'm on a stage, a lot of people are dancing in front of me, and there's a red light on me. I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Premonition. This is it. This, this happened. But yeah. I, I didn't know what I was doing as a kid. But here I am 15 years later when I was in my early 20s, and I was like, oh my God. That makes sense now. So that was a kind of, again, like a, a statement that sent from fate or something that was right. programmed in my head, but I didn't know what it was. And I still, again, I, I try not to admit that that's what I do, but that was the moment where, again, this was summer 2001 or 2002, where I was like, this is it. This all makes sense now. So I kept doing it ever since. So that is the one... The one wake up call where I'm like, okay, this this is a path that was programmed for me from outer space, from the, from written in the stars, whatever you want to call it, and that was the moment where it made perfect sense. So that was kind of like, you know what, what I'm doing is actually not that bad because back in the '90s, DJing was considered like less than an electrician. Like the DJ booth wasn't even in the main club. The, the DJ was on the corner. Technician. Yeah, I ain't doing that. Yeah. So the DJ booth was literally in a corner spot. You weren't the, the center of attention, but I loved doing that as well. I was 13, 14, doing clubs when the club's minimum age was 21, but they would sneak me in through the kitchen. And because the DJ is kind of in a back room or a back corner, no one really noticed. So, um, yeah, just seeing that evolution happen from, you know, doing things as, as an underage and then just keep not questioning it too much, just going with the flow. Uh, and again, you know, 30 years later, it's still just flowing. <laughs> Interesting. Now... What do you think um, if there's, I mean, you've been, you've been there since like, again, we, 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 we've mentioned it, but uh, do you feel like there's something that is needed or something is about to like change the industry? Think, things, once are, again? things have changed a lot. Things have changed. And um, um, the technology has made things so much easier. So a lot of people can do what I'm doing almost in the same way, but they won't have the same finesse that you right, have. And so right. that, that's where experience comes into play more than anything else. Um, and the technology has made music so accessible by everybody. So I can get a track a few months before it's released. I get it on one of these uh, in-flight promos or something. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is groovy, you know? And I'll play it for months and months and months. And then everybody, when it gets the official release, then you'll hear it bang it out. And so I'm, I tend to move on fast. So this networking that we have of this unlimited access to music has really changed things to think... You know, not too long ago, we would travel. When I used to travel, I traveled with two case logics. Each one had 200 CDs. Right. And they were, you know, in my gigantic carry-on UDG bag. Right. And, you know, when I'd arrive to some airports, they'd stop me and be like, what is this? Is it adult films? I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, they're all numbered. They're all labeled. They're clearly there. So to think that all of that is replaced by a single USB key, yep. still mind-blowing. You know, it's still amazing how like we went from the Wright Brothers to like, you know, an Airbus A380. It's the same way I say like how the DJs went from CDs and vinyl to a single USB. Ten and in years. the future, in the future, I do understand that there's this move to cloud, right. you know, where you just have to get into a club and you log into your name and there it is. I'm still skeptical about that. I was skeptical about the USB. But you have to depend on someone's internet connection. And we all know what it's like when your internet connection dies. Yep. When a router gets switched off, especially in Beirut with our power cuts. Yep. So we all know what it's like. So I'm not ready to do that transition yet. I'm fine with my USBs and my SSDs. Uh, DJ Corner, of course, hooked me up with nice SSDs. <laughs> so I make sure that I still have my music with me and organized the way I am. So for the time being, the technology, the, the equipment has made things a lot easier to work with and a lot easier to travel and no more getting stopped at the customs. Thank so God. USB. Thank God, no more customs. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've gone to countries. I'll, I'll remember, an <laughs> for example, <laughs> they used to they used to take my whole CDs aside, but I knew they were going to do that. I learned, so I'd have a backup case of just ten CDs, which are the essential party CDs. Right. So you can take my two hundred, leave them there until I leave the country. But I would have my emergency ten, so I can still play the party. So there's ways around it. Back yeah. in the day, so technology guys, be oh, thankful. You can claim them back. Claim on the way out okay, of the country. Right, right. But you definitely got to appreciate the technology that you have, the access to the music, and the access to the equipment, which makes things a lot easier. That's that's for sure. 
I mean, okay, switching <coughs> gears, right? Whenever I see you or whenever I talk to you, uh, whether it's in person or over the phone, bro, you have like, I don't know, like a lot of energy, a lot of energy. Uh, I'm sure, um, you know, there's something that gives you that energy. What is it? It's happiness of life. It's living, <laughs> it's living a non-conformist lifestyle. So like... I know that like on a Monday morning, you know, my friends are going to work and stuff. <laughs> Mondays are my Sundays. So, you know, I go through like my weekends is, is other people's weekdays. Right. So I'm kind of on the opposite polarity. But I do appreciate the goodness that comes out of that because I know that I'm there and people trust me, especially if it's raves or weddings. I do everything from raves to weddings and everything in between, but not kids parties, not yet. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that until I have kids. You've if, never done a kids party. I did. I did a kids party for a friend of mine when we were 10 years old. I DJ the party when we were kids. Yeah. Then he has a daughter who was 10 years old. A couple of years ago, I DJed her party. So life has come full circle. I've come through one whole generation <laughs> from when we were 10 to his daughter. And I, and I DJed his wedding, you know, 15 years earlier. So now it came full circle when I, again, went from being a 10 year old to DJing my friend's 10 year old daughter. Wow. But, um, yeah, the, the changes that have happened ever since, the technology that's that's come around has made this easier, but it's still the same passion. Um, and that's where I get my energy flow is from lots of other people. Uh, people think I'm a little crazy and I'm high all the time on good life and stuff. But look, I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I do this in the morning. I haven't had food yet today. Wow. I know I'm going to have chicken wings, so I'm excited I'm going to go get <laughs> some chicken wings. Um, and uh, yeah, just you know, keep positive with people. Um, some people don't like when you have too much good energy. They think there's something wrong with you. I don't get that. Or they get jealous or envious, yeah. which kind of annoys me. But um, yeah, just just yeah, just yeah, spread good vibes. You know? Are you a morning it, it person? Um, I am a morning I mean, I know it's <laughs> ironic, right? Yeah. I know it's ironic. I, I sleep I sleep three to four hours a day. Some days I get seven if I'm lucky, but more most of the time it's three to four hours. Okay. I believe the more you sleep, the less of life you're gonna live. So make the most out of every hour. Even if I stay awake watching a documentary about I don't know, air crash investigations. Yeah, it's one okay. of my one of my topics. <laughs> um I don't mind keeping up just to keep my brain functioning. And when I turned sixteen a long time ago, uh, I realized that uh the, the clock was ticking. And so if you subtract an hour or two of sleep every day you can actually get more out of life of course if i'm tired i'll sleep but i've kind of trained my body right uh, my biology has adapted to the way it is and so on weekends i would sleep at seven or eight in the morning on weekdays i wake up at five or six so my body just it doesn't have a circadian clock it doesn't have any structure i think it just got used to it so right. you will never see me yawning it doesn't happen i don't yawn Really? Unless it's a really boring movie on a flight. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, no. There's just, you know, keeping in, in check with yourself. Right. Um, surrounding yourself with good people all the time. You know, like Jeev here, I've, you know, I've known for years as well. You know, we've kept in touch all this time. You know, we kept in touch all this time where he's gone, where he's going. And I'm glad that he's, you know, back and doing his thing that he loves to. You know, and, and I appreciate how you've witnessed other people around you go through whatever we've had the last couple of years in life and now you realize that we're actually all okay at the end yep, of the day. Yep, 100%, 100%. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, now here, here's a similar question. What do you do during your downtime that does not involve music? I gave you a bit of a hint. So I I, 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 I have four the cats. Air crashed. I have oh, four cats. Right, right. I live with four cats. Um, yeah, not one, two, three, four cats. And they are... The love of my life. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> I know. I sound like a kid, right? But no, they really are. And, uh, as, and as, as, as we mature and cats mature, they become more emotionally dependent. And so right. in a way, I'm kind of addicted to them the same way they're addicted to me. So I spend a lot of time with them. I do watch a lot of uh, films and documentaries. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to always stimulate the brain with new stuff. And I do music as well, but I don't do music continuously. Like you would never see me listening to music on a phone or an app or with my headphones at an airport i don't do that to me music is is time for music i'll do like my five hours a week where i go through all the new music and i program for my weekends but i won't be continuously doing it because you never want to get bored of music so you don't want to overdo it and i know my friends say i love music bro since i was a child i said me too because yeah i cannot live without music yeah me too i must breathe music yes me too but you need to live give music it's its own space to breathe. Right. If you overdose on it, you know, if you play it too much, you're going to get sick of it, which is kind of like well, we, we don't like top 20 hits anymore because right. 
you're playing the same 20 hits over and over and over and over and over and over and now we have the TikTok hits it's not even oh, wow. it's 15 seconds right. I mean we would play tracks that were 10 12 minutes long now you're talking about 15 seconds and then people ask you to play that song they only know those 15 seconds what happens for the next minute and a half two minutes nobody knows it so yeah there's got to be time for music there's got to be time for cats got to be time for cooking yes I do cook and um, uh, video games I kind of stopped a few years ago but maybe I'll get back into that but there's just time to relax and so I, I'm in either extreme hardcore party or extreme hardcore chill and there's almost nothing in between so Everybody if I know I have a day no or two off yeah. just put the phone on silent you know turn off the lights close the curtains and just chill because right. you know the, the you know by Thursday Friday it's like oh my god here we go oh my god Saturday right. Sunday yeah, 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 yeah. Monday Tuesday <laughs> Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday yeah. so it's a wave yeah, it's, yeah, a it's a weekly wave. wave yeah, 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 yeah. it's a wave <laughs> right um, how do you think the you know uh, the last the past two years they changed a lot of things a lot of things uh, how do you how do you how did you observe or what did you observe uh, when it comes to the music and, you want to uh, know the truth nightclub I'm going to reveal the truth. <laughs> So during, during the lockdowns, right, we had all these people live streaming. I'm guilty. I had to do a couple because people asked. So I did a couple, but oh, hell, hell no, I didn't enjoy doing it because I'm a crowd yeah. feeder. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I've reached a point where I don't even need to practice at home. I just like to experiment sometimes. But if I practice, I'll do like a 15, 20 minute session. I don't want to play a whole hour at home staring at a camera and just playing music to myself with nobody right. watching. Right. It's kind of depressing. It was cool at first because... Oh my God, we're in lockdown. We need some music. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, wow. I got my work cut out for me. <laughs> to edit out a lot. <laughs> yeah. no, right? no, but I don't think so. Okay. Um, all right, bro. Uh, what plans do you have for the new feature? Anything in particular or... I have never planned anything. Okay. <laughs> I've never planned anything. I think I think that's the best part, you know. Um, I come across uh, DJs who say, you know, bro, I want to uh, learn production because I want to release music so everybody can hear my music and I want to get booked to play in Europe and stuff. Like, if you're over planning it, it's not going to happen, you know. Uh, in life, there is one simple thing I think any psychiatrist would agree with me. If you raise your expectation too high... And whatever reality is even 1% less, you will be depressed. So my whole life, I actually lower my expectations. I keep everything like not even on underground, like the piles of Burj Khalifa, like deep, deep, deep in the sand, right. like not even the underground, like, you know, the ones that keep the building standing piles, P I L E S P I L E S. So, um, uh, by keeping your expectation low, whatever happens, you will be appreciated of it. You'll, ex you will expect, Nothing, and you will get something. Even if it's a 10% party, right. it's great. Um, the few times where I actually had high expectations and I tried to lower it down are the nights where it was like, okay, ah, de, nos, nos, half, half. It wasn't yeah. super malishy. You know, it, it just works. It flows. So all these other DJs, what the problem is, is um, over-expecting things, over-egoizing. I know some that even left their day jobs. I'm like, no, don't do it. Don't leave your day job. No, mm. I, I was one of the few lucky ones. Maybe I was the last of the Mohicans who was able to quit a day job because there was enough love and enough uh, happening around where I can do it. But I don't advise anybody to do that. If you want to do it as a hobby, as a part-time thing, go ahead. That, that makes the better thing because I was like that back in the day. I was working in an ad agency. You're in marketing? <laughs> yeah, I was in marketing. <laughs> Not just in marketing. I was in the PR department. Ooh. Wow. You know, Mick, <laughs> I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is... Uh, this Should is, do better I'm, research. I, I'm, a, I'm a Gemini. So I've, I've always had like two lives. But I'm a Gemini Taurus cusp, May 22nd. 81. <sighs> Revealed my age. Anyway, um, so... So I was always able to like go to the office, do my thing, and then afternoon I'd go back home, get the music ready, and go and play clubs. Right. There'd be times where I was even a TV producer. I worked for a bunch of satellite channels when TV was still a thing. Is TV still a thing? I don't. I don't have a TV. I have a TV, but I have a, I a Chromebook. See. I don't even watch TV. No, now that I think of it, uh, it's mainly yeah. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu. and the World Cup when it was on. And then people are like, uh, I didn't watch the game. I'll watch the two minute highlights, just as good. Yeah. yeah instead of wasting yeah. two hours of like popcorn, you just watch it fast. So, uh, able to switch between the day job and the night job was not easy. But in 2008. I knew that things had to change and they had to change fast. And I had a pretty good day job. Those who know what I did during the day, I'm not going to reveal the company names, but they were pretty big. I had to choose one or the other. Um, and the music was always emotionally more satisfying, spiritually, 
and financially wasn't as good at the time, but it, I just kept focusing on what makes you happy. And that's what I tell everybody. Always focus on what makes you happy, but don't overthink it. If you overthink it, that's again where the expectation is high. I think I'm going to be the next David Guetta. I'm like, mm. guys, there's thousands like you, hundreds yeah, of thousands yeah. like you, not just here, in Brazil, in the US, especially with the new generation kids. I mean, my, my nephew is seven years old and he like shows off to his friends about me. I'm like, bro, bro, just calm it down. <laughs> I don't want this to get to my head with a seven-year-old ego. But, um, <laughs> but it's always just a lot of fun. And so, um, yeah, I don't know what plans life has for me. I just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm blessed that, you know, people trust me to come and do my thing. Wherever I go, it's always good vibes, you know, having good food and meeting nice people. And um, yeah, just still oh. loving what I do. So I... I'm 41. <laughs> I don't know how you don't I look it. I don't know how I you don't I look have it. no idea no way. how I reach this age and I'm still doing what I'm doing. But I'll tell you one of the tricks is to keep it all in balance. So um, don't overdo the parties. And even if you're a successful DJ, you would know the real successful DJs, when they're not playing, they don't need to go out. So I can go out and drink and do whatever I want for free all over Beirut and Dubai, but I choose not to. I choose to just keep all my energy for the nights that I'm playing right. and then give it my all rather than falling apart. That's how I survived 30 years in the nightlife business by keeping it in check, keeping the balance, keeping your health in check, cold showers, vitamin C, energy drinks, uh, and preferably no probably don't need that you can be fine without it if i do it'll be the very end when the party's almost over all right i'll have a ay, 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 ay. just to feel sleep at the very end that's it otherwise yeah just go with the flow keep it real keep it in balance and check so yeah that's for sure all right <laughs> do you do you see yourself slowing down anytime soon i'm I'm I mean, more, I'm more picky. God forbid. No, I don't. No. I, okay. All right. But <laughs> do you see yourself? I mean, I know. Okay. A lot of DJs, when they reach that pinnacle, I wouldn't say you're, I would still say you're at your prime. I'm peaking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm peaking. Yeah. Peaking. It's, it's a long see. prime, long prime. <laughs> but I mean, do you, do you see yourself? Be more selective. I, it reached a point now where I, I'm not, again, this is not my job. Right. I still. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, why I'm here. <laughs> is this the Matrix? <laughs> what pill did I take, the red or the blue? I can't figure out. I'm still, still trying to figure out what's yeah. happening. But um, no, there's um, always a case of uh, being more selective. Like I get offers for all kinds of stuff. But for example, I'll, I'll give you two versions, the clubs and the wedding, the weddings. So for weddings, I sometimes get requests from certain couples who, I don't know, I get a call. Yeah, there's a couple, they're having their wedding next year in Portugal or something. I'm like, okay, Portugal. Yeah, they have a two-day wedding and you know they've been to one of the weddings that I did a couple of years ago and they liked your music. So I'm like, okay, please give me the exact spelling of their name. Why? I have to search online, whether through Facebook or Insta or whatever, to find out who they are. I want to make sure I have at least one person in common right. to make sure that that's a credible event. So right. the few times where I had nobody in common is when I tend to reject. Right. There was one experience in 2017 where I accepted a wedding for a couple who I didn't really know, but they would know me. And I regretted taking that because it wasn't the vibe I wanted. So I tend to be more precise and selective making sure that i choose only the ones that are worth doing it because as many great events in the thousands maybe ten thousands that i've done the one time where it's not great will dominate in your mind it's kind right. of like yeah. world news yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. world news here's some good news on bbc and cnn you don't hear good news yeah. you hear these false ones but most of it's just bad news so the negative emotion drives us humans more so i will always be more protective and selective about what clubs I'm going to do. So I get this club request from, I don't know, for example, it's a club I've been many times, but I know that things have changed a lot there. I will actually say, hold on, before I accept this, let me let me do some research. I have friends all over the place and I ask my friends, you know about this place? Because yeah, the crowd are not that great. The sound's not that great, but the guy's promising me that it'll be good on the nights. I will tend to reject that. So I tend to say no, because I don't want to go somewhere that's going to have a lasting emotional damage in my spirit. Right. You know, I always want to be somewhere where it's happy and positive and, uh, and yeah, just so it's not slowing down. It's keeping the same rhythm going, but being just more picky, being snobby. Right. Ah. There you have it. <laughs> uh, lastly, um, any advice? I mean, we, the whole thing was full of advice, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but any particular advice for someone who you know admires you, f wants to follow in your footsteps? Uh, don't. don't, don't, don't follow my footsteps. No, 
Don't do it. Don't do it. I warn you. If you know the nitty gritty details of what I've dealt with in my life, especially the last couple of years, uh, no, it's it's not, it's not worthy. But I will say one thing: why I'm still here, why I'm still around, why I still get to travel. Uh, no vaccine, no PCR, no nothing. Thank God. No even check at the airport. No. Oh uh, wow. Okay. Uh, I want to enter your country. Can you let me in? Wait, hold on. Before you enter our country. Yeah. You know, you know, Total Recall, the the Arnold uh, the, Schwarzenegger, the, uh, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the original yeah, yeah, yeah. from the early nineties. Yeah, welcome to Mars. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so um, I'm just glad that the uh, the DJ scene. Listen, guys, you have the technology; it's there. The music. If you want to get into DJing, don't go and ask a DJ. Please give me your archive. Give me your whole library. Don't do that because what's going to happen is you're going to have 20 gigabytes of music that somebody else has pre-selected. Do your own research. I have always relied on research. Yeah, once in a while, I'll hear a track. I'm like, damn, that's that, that's that's pretty cool. What is that track? Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll Shazam a track if I like it. Of course, Shazamming is great. I remember the days when Shazam wasn't around. You'd have to guess, what is he saying? Don't go, let go. Don't go, let yeah, go. Don't have, go, ego. Don't go, eat eggs. What What's he saying? Yeah, so, you actually have to go to Virgin Megastore, hum it out hum or it sing out. it out yeah. to, the, to, the, to the sales guy. To the guy, guy in the vest. And he's like, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. You know, the, the guy with the Virgin yeah, Megastore yeah. vest. Like, yeah. <laughs> schlick, schlack. <laughs> the Velcro. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just keep, there's so much music out there. You don't necessarily need to follow someone. I know there's a lot of DJs follow certain record labels. That's cool, but you have to be diverse. You have to be flexible. A uh, perfect example is a local guy named Kirin Barkuki. He's a good friend. DJ Styles. DJ Styles. So yeah. um, I've met him when he was young. I actually used to work uh, with his sister. I was one of the producers for a TV show. Yes, that was part of my past life. I was a TV producer. For a couple of big channels, right. I'm not going to mention. I think one of them is gone now. Um, and so Kareem, has Wait. Ma- he's managed to adapt. Okay. He does weddings and he does w- 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 uh, parties. He does hip hop parties. He does house parties. That's how, you, that's how you're going to make it. You got to be flexible. You got to keep your mind open to new music and old. Uh, I'll be honest. I actually, even though I, I go through like 200 new tracks every day, I've dug back into the 70s and 80s of my childhood in California and I found tracks that my unconscious remembers, but I don't You're remember. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. This is groovy. Wow, this is great. So you can never, there's nothing wrong with digging in the past rather than focusing on the new. Right. So for these big raves and techno events that I do, of course, I'm playing the latest, latest stuff. And within a few months, people will Shazam my tracks. I don't mind. I don't mind. I put them on SoundCloud within a few days. Everybody knows I do that. Um, and I don't mind them shazamming it. At least I'm introducing new music rather yep. than all these DJs playing what the other guys are playing continuously. 100%. Uh, yep. There's a cycle of about three, three, four months of music and you can move on. There's always something fresh. So keep it fresh. Find your own identity. Make sure it's music that you love, not, not music that is crowd pleasing, but do be able to please the crowd as well. Yep. But don't go overboard. Like don't play five hits in a row. If you're going to do a house or a techno event, don't play five expected tracks. Play something in between that you want to educate. And um, I hate to say this word. Can I say the word? We'll censor it. (laughs) Have, can I say guts? I can say guts. Okay. So you can have the guts to introduce new music. Yeah. I mean, if you are empowered and you are trusted by thousands of people to go and do their clubs, the least thing you can do is play something that, They'd never heard, but you you are confident it will sound right, good. Right. And most of the time, when I hear new music, I'm like, oh, this is going to sound so great in you know Beirut, or this is going to sound great in Dubai, or this is going to work so well on the beach party in Saudi, you know. Right. But that track might not work at a wedding. But at yeah. least have the guts. That's the rated G version. Is that the Disney version? Yeah, yeah. Have the have the Disney spirit to be able to play new music and not be afraid of it. Great. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. It does. I yeah, hope it I don't does. get over censored no, no, here. No, 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 no. This is YouTube, right? It's not, it's not broadcast. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. YouTube. Okay. Well, I'll have to put a disclaimer at the beginning. Of the- <laughs> Warning. Please be over 13. PG 13. PG 13. Okay. Yeah. PG 13. Uh, was it a music, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, channel that you were working at? One of them, yes. Okay. One yeah. of them was we'll a music talk about channel. It after the pod. One of them was one of them was car related. One of them was music related. Oh. One of them was children related. But I had to, yeah, I had to let all that go, and uh, I've never looked back. And um, I'm still friends with everyone there, and they actually look at me because you know what? Even when I did the corporate world, yeah, like my manager, she's still in touch with me on LinkedIn, <laughs> and once in a while she connects to me on Facebook. Because you know what? This suits you better anyway. <laughs> this suits you better because I used to go to the office in a suit, sometimes right. with a tie, sometimes without, yeah. putting press packs together and photocopying. 
and parking my car every day yeah. and having my little lunchbox. Look. And she says, you know this lifestyle you've lived ever since you quit the job, like, I don't know, 2005? Yeah. This suits you better anyway. So, oh, wow. okay. so I'm like, thanks. I don't know if that's a compliment <laughs> or is that criticism? But anyway, uh, I appreciate a lot of thanks to all these people around us who have supported and trusted and are open to me. And I always help DJs with advice. I'm almost like the pioneer DJ tech support for the Middle East. I try to help everybody. I do reply to every message. I think it doesn't hurt. He does. He really does. I do. Does, yeah. yeah. I, there's a lot of DJs who always have questions, which I learn from. Uh, and yeah. I'm again, I've been doing this for 30 years and I'm still learning. And I learn from other people's issues, especially when it comes to record box or the new CDJs or there's a problem with the USB. So I'm, I'm always here to help people because when I was younger, I was a teenager, um, the older DJs were very jealous. Right. So they would try to like stop me from playing places. So I... I remember that there was one guy who passed away a long time ago, a good friend, Rap Pace, if you know him in Beirut. When he passed away, this guy actually helped me get through the fog of the jealous older DJs and motivated me. So I'm paying the same spirit forward to as many DJs as I can. Those who deserve it, of course. Um, that's why I'm saying stay humble, be cool, and always be flexible. My education and my knowledge is here to be shared, um, and I will continuously do this for as long as I can. My man, never a dull moment when you're around. Thank you so much. Hey, Jivo, my man. Thank you for, for having time. me in, man. These microphones sound really good. <laughs> yeah, they do. I can <laughs> talk to you like Barry White. Hey, baby. <laughs> it's just Barry White. You know, kind of proving it. Yeah, that's cool, Mike. All it, man. right, there you have it, folks. The one, the only Mad Jam. Thank you so much again for joining us. You want to yell out your socials? Uh, Mad Jam, DJ Mad Jam, but be careful. There's a dance group in America that do these festivals called the Mad Jam. That's not me. When you see people doing ballroom dancing, that's not me. I'm Mad Jam DJ. Yeah. Mad Jam. Just Google it. You'll find it everywhere. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I really like your name. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you know where my name comes from? I do, actually. Uh, you, you don't know. know. The, no, the first time I heard your real name, yeah. I was like, ah, wow. That's... Yeah. So th the trick is, since you mentioned it earlier, my, f my first name is Ahmed. Yeah, yeah. So there's a ah, I remove the ah, you get mad. Yeah. My family name is Ajam. Ah, ah, ah. I remove the ah and ah. Mad Jam, and there's a DJ in the middle. Exactly. Thank you, 1995. Exactly. Thank you. And I'm, I'm like, I'm very, you know, what do you call, fascinated with these <laughs> kind, with DJ names or stage names, and got lucky, I love with, Mad got lucky with that one. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I had a very cheesy uh, DJ name uh, back when I was DJ. Evo, Evo, what was it? Jivo Ho? No, no. Ho, I Ho? You know, I should have stuck with Jivo because that was actually a nickname. It's catchy. But uh, that's a topic for another. <laughs> 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 all right, boys and girls, thanks for listening. Help us out by liking, commenting, sharing, following us on our socials and all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. If there's someone you'd like uh, to, in, uh, like us, you would like us. You would to, like us. Yeah, to you invite like for us? a podcast. I like you. Do let us know. And also, if there's something you'd like <laughs> us to ask them, drop us a DM once again. This podcast is powered by the Audio-Technica AT2040 Dynamic Broadcast Microphone. If you like what you hear, get in touch, and we'll hook you up with a mic test. And with that, let's hear that outro music. Stay safe and peace out. <laughs> <laughs>